Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the Honor Magic 4 Pro, the current flagship that Honor has to offer within the Magic series. It's a special device on account of it having a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor and an interesting design. The back side reminds me of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro and at the front side we have a pill shaped cutout which should remind you of the Huawei P40 Pro and the Mate 40 Pro. Uh, a few other premieres, it films in a special format which has been IMAX certified, it's got 100 watt wired and wireless charging and it's supposed to be a powerhouse that includes a periscope camera among others. Now the price tag should be around $800 or something like that or $900 and uh, it's just been set up, I'm just firing it up right now, so I'm going to put it to the side and start checking out the innards of the box. It was launched earlier this spring, so it's still a pretty fresh device and let's see what Honor is offering us. As you know, Huawei sold Honor quite a while ago, so they're a separate entity from Huawei. And in the box we have this metal key used to access the slots. We should also have a manual here, but we have a test unit, so you'll definitely get your manual in the commercial version. And here we have the case, which is transparent and flexible with a huge generous cutout for the camera. And this is the 100 watt charger with an USB-A connector, which is not as big as the ones I've seen Xiaomi offering those big 120 watts chargers, but still pretty heavy. And finally, we got here the cable, which goes from USB-C to good old USB-A, which you can see right here. That's about it. As far as the accessories are concerned, nothing out of the ordinary unless you count the charger, which has become a rarity nowadays. As I said before, the fact that we have a pill-shaped cutout is something we don't see nowadays. Uh, I thought the last one was the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Actually, Honor keeps perpetuating this design. Now, speaking of design, let's talk about it. So, the good news that is that we have IP60 certification for dust and waterproofing. It's quite a hefty phone and it's top heavy. Definitely the top part is heavier than the bottom part. Uh, this camera protrudes a bit, but they made a smart decision to include the periscope camera here so it won't bulge anywhere else. So it sits quite well on a flat surface. It comes in colors like black, white, cyan, gold and also orange, which is supposed to have some sort of leather imitation. Uh, it measures 9.1 millimeters in thickness and weighs 209 grams. I find it to be quite heavy and initially I was tempted to say it's actually um, a bit slippery. However, I think you can grasp its uh, metal frames properly and that improves the grip quite a, a bit. You can basically hang your fingers around the metal frame here and the glossiness at the back, I should mention that, draws quite a few fingerprints. It's a massive phone which somehow you'll be able to handle easily. It's got curved sides at the front and curved sides at the back side. This is glass, this is metal and this is glass as well. An interesting choice for the protection of the screen, what we have here is called aluminum silicate glass. It's an odd choice if you ask me, but Honor wanted to do something special. Now, the screen I keep playing with here, well, what we're dealing with here is a 6.81 inch diagonal, uh, which I've actually seen on Honor phones before, so 6.81 inches, and the panel is a AMOLED with LTPO, which means the refresh rate can go down if you're viewing static content. We have 2848 over 1080 pixel resolution, 120 hertz refresh rate and HDR10 plus support. And guess what? You can also record video in HDR with the back camera and enjoy it on the screen. Now, if you go further here, uh, let's see. So if you want to view the CPU, you should probably get one of these cool apps called IDA, for example. Let's turn down the brightness a little bit. And let's see what it shows us. We have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor as we should for a flagship. And in the current case, it's accompanied by 8 gigs of RAM, as well as 256 gigabytes of storage. There's also a version with 12 gigs and 512. Okay, now as far as the battery is concerned, it may show here as 4800 mAh. It's actually 4600 mAh. It charges at 100 watts via wire. And the crazy thing is that it charges also wirelessly again at 100 watts. It's got reverse charge and you should be able to get a full charge via wire in 30 minutes and you should be at 50% charge wirelessly in just 15 minutes, which is pretty impressive if you ask me.
Now uh, we have stereo speakers here, we can see one here and uh, the other one here at the top side, so stereo setup. And we also have this infrared emitter here to control your TV. Uh, you also have stereo recording when you're filming stuff. And I should probably also mention that we have an ultrasonic in-display fingerprint scanner, which is this one here. Nowadays people actually rely on optical scanners, so this one is a rarity. Now, as far as connectivity is concerned, we're getting 5G, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, GPS, NFC, infrared and USB-C 3.1. And this is the SIM tray, by the way, which is a gasket and protection against the liquids and such things. Okay, uh, I think we've covered everything and I think it's time to address the cameras. I went to a white background so you can properly see the pill-shaped cutout which is available here and it actually hides two sensors. There's the main one which is a bit shocking because it's ultra wide. It's not a regular wide lens camera. It's a 12 megapixel ultra wide 100 degree cam and it's accompanied by a time of flight 3D sensor uh, used both for biometric authentication meaning face unlock and your bokeh needs. It films in 4K 30 frames per second this dual sensor setup. At the back side things get even more interesting, there is a huge array of sensors here, so let's get going. 50 megapixel is the main camera, without optical stabilization and with a Sony sensor, Sony IMX766 uh, if I remember correctly. Now this is the main camera, it has a laser focus to go with it and also multi detection um, of the autofocus. Then there's the 50 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus which is used for macro and then there's the main I would say main because it's the most important selling point, periscope camera. 64 megapixel telephoto 3.5x optical zoom, optical image stabilization somehow and the whole array reaches a whole 100x digital zoom. Then we have the time of flight 3D sensor, then we have the LED flash here and we have even more sensors. There's a color spectrum sensor as well to keep the white balance in check. It all films in 4K 60 frames per second and it also has some interesting options here. So uh, if you go to the movie section, this is the part where we can actually play with the color grading. You can shoot videos in 4K HDR mode. You can also shoot in this log mode. Shoot in landscape orientation for a cinematic effect. You can also apply this loot area. Basically, uh, the color grading is already applied with a bunch of predefined profiles for all of you wannabe movie makers. These are the special options, we got super macro, story, panorama, documents, high res, stickers, slow-mo and multi-video. This is the pro mode with white balance, autofocus, exposure, shutter and ISO as well as metering. You already saw movie. This is the video area. Somehow they didn't include the special stabilization option. They did include here super night mode for filming and also this uh, uh, set of filters I would say or something close to it. Then there's the photo section with an AI feature which detects scenes and recommends modes. We got portrait, we got night mode and we got aperture which is basically a bokeh for objects. There's a lot to unpack as far as the camera is concerned and a lot to remember but remember this it's one of the few IMAX certified camera. I'm talking about the fact you can film IMAX worthy content on it. Now, the software which we're dealing with here is Android 12. That's the good news. Well, it feels very familiar because this Magic UI 6 seems quite inspired by Emotion UI, which we had on, uh, well, Huawei phones. So, they're pretty similar if you look here. I'm using gestures to navigate around. This is the multitasking area. There's another layer. So, if I pull this here, you can see this sidebar with useful shortcuts. This is the quick settings area. And we also have the notifications area which should be right below it. These are the settings, colorful, just like we had on Emotion UI. And you have a lot of customization here as far as the home screen and wallpaper are concerned. This is the always on display section. Um, well, let's see what else we also have here. We have a privacy area with a privacy dashboard which has become very popular thanks to Android 12. And uh, I would also say that uh, we got your cards here, which is, I would say, another name for widgets. And I have to say they're quite good looking. You can see also the classic widgets here. There's a separation of them, which I find to be interesting. Not bad looking, these cards, I'll be honest. Okay, so my first impression. Uh, they threw the kitchen sink here, that's the expression. It's, I think it's the first IMAX certified phone I'm seeing and it's filming in a quality which is above average. I'm saying that not just as an unboxing and an unboxer, 
I've actually went ahead and played with the phone. You can see here that we have 20 videos. Some of them shot with that color grading. You can see here some odd color choices. We have selfie videos, we have roses in the park. We even have some uh, lovely peacocks strolling around for your eyes to see. But that's going to happen in the review, which is coming this summer, pretty soon. So far, so good. I would say that my first impression has changed. At first, I thought it was slippery. Now, I think it's not. It's quite the powerhouse, but I'm a bit worried about the battery life. I guess we'll have to wait and see, and I'm very curious about the wireless charge. That's it from us, from gsnon.com. Remember the price, around $800. This is a flagship, one we may remember through the video capture quality. Goodbye.